Choosing any gym equipment always comes down to space, functionality, and budget. If you've got loads of money and space, you have all the options. If you're missing one or both of these options, you are limited. You'll have to compromise at some stage. Whether it be a home or a gym, you'll need to have some sort of plan when choosing gym equipment. Now, training is forever, so it's a long-term decision. If you choose for today, you may regret it later. You may buy a cheaper bench instead of holding off and saving for a few months. Now, later on, you may regret this decision when you decide to sell it and buy the, the better bench later on. By doing this, you lose time and money, or sometimes the cheap bench may break or just be crap to use. Now, money. If you're tight on money, you'll have to sacrifice, whether it be functionality or quality. My advice would always be in this case to save if you can. Your aim should always be to get a bench that is decent in terms of functionality and quality. Get a bench that you will train on for a bare minimum of 10 years. I have a 2008 model bench. Waiting longer doing this can save you a lot of money in the long run. There are people out there like myself who can train happily on the most basic equipment forever. If this is you, a deadlift, bench and squat person, you can get away with just a basic bench, flat bench. When I train in my office gym, probably for seven or eight years, I very rarely used incline. I would never have used decline. A flat bench for me would have done the trick here. However, if you want to perform exercises like leg curls, you'll need to buy a bench that accepts attachments. A decent quality bench with this functionality will be significantly more expensive than the, the flat bench. Now, if you're tight on space, this is where you are gonna have to do some long-term planning. Most capital cities around the world are experiencing insane house prices. Gyms, whether it be home, studio or commercial, are all getting smaller. This is looking like a long-term trend, unfortunately. You might think one day you'll get your dream home with a massive shed for a gym. Now, as someone who lives in Sydney, I have given up on this dream. So my advice is be realistic. So to grow the functionality of your gym in a tight space, by this I'm referring to the number of exercises that you can perform, you will need to get equipment that can perform multiple exercises. Now, if you only have room for a power rack or multi-gym, getting a dedicated preacher coil machine is out of the question. So to perform this exercise in your gym, you'll need a bench that has got a preacher curl attachment. Now, for those that don't have room for a power rack or multi-gym, you'll need to factor in other ways to do exercises. So for example, if you wanted to do chin-ups, you have the option of a wall-mounted chin-up bar or the Iron Master Superbench has chin-up options. Now for functionality, a big commercial gym just needs a bench to be a bench. Now they have machines for all the different exercises. Their benches will cop loads of use and abuse, so they need the benches to be built tough and with basic and easy to use adjustments now, the ATX Warrior or Bulls benches would be perfect examples of this type of bench. Now, as the space gets tighter, you have room for less machines. A studio may only have room for one bench and one leg extension curl machine. So maybe instead of getting the standalone leg extension, you may get a bench with a leg attachment. So there's no reason why you can't leave the leg attachment set up um, permanently. Now, if you do do some group training or for whatever reason you need another bench, you can simply take the leg attachment out. It just gives you a bit more flexibility. Now, as the gym gets smaller, you have two options. You can simplify your training by performing less exercises or look for ex equipment that squeezes the most out of its footprint. In terms of benches, if you are really tight on space, there is no bench that comes close to Iron Master. Now the ATX benches are great in a, a larger studio or a larger home gym setting. They are bigger, they are really solid, 
but you can still wheel them around. But when it gets tight, I mean real tight, the iMaster benches are that bit smaller and lighter to move around, but trust me, they're just as strong. But where the iMaster bench really shines is the attachments. It is not just a bench. In this case, it's more like a, a platform for so many other exercises. Now, the only issue for most is that as you start stacking the attachments, it does get a bit expensive. However, um, this is offset by being able to buy them as you can afford them. Now, the best way to look at these upgrades is to think of them like a, um, a gym membership. Just throw a bit of money aside each month, and when you have, a have enough to make your next addition to your gym, buy it. Now, the, the, there's one golden rule that is always constant. Do not buy cheap crap under any circumstance unless you can avoid it. Maybe if you've got six months to live, get a cheap bench. But if you plan on any sort of longevity with your training, try and get a quality bench. Now, whether it be the, the thin backboard on the upholstery that, that can crack or it just being a, a, a wobbly piece of junk under heavy loads, trust me, I've heard it so many times. I wish I got the better bench in the first place. So don't make that mistake. This also so solves another problem. If you're bamboozled by choice, if you stick to quality benches, you can't go wrong. Thinking before buying is essential. You need to plan. However, some people just take this to extremes and spend too much time trying to make the perfect choice. If you get a quality bench, it might not be perfect, but you've ticked most of the boxes and you'll end up with something really good for your training for a long time. And you can live with any of the minor imperfections.